the 8.6 scientific notation today. Uh, yesterday, we started to lay some groundwork for this uh, scientific notation, and both positive and negative exponents in scientific notation. So does anybody remember um, what kind of number would have a positive exponent? Mason? One that doesn't have the decimal in it. Okay, or a really, really... Small number. Big number. The very, very large numbers have positive exponents. And what's the opposite of very, very large? Very, very small, like point zero zero zero, however many times, and then the number, that would be a negative exponent. So you're going to see that come back into the lesson today. You have to be able to recognize positive and negative exponents and then um, and then which way you would move your decimal. So remember, scientific notation is a shortcut to writing really big and small numbers. And we use powers of 10 because remember, powers of 10 um, stand for each one of our place values. Uh, standard form would be the expanded version. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then scientific notation is the shortened version. But remember, your decimal value has to be greater than 1 and less than 10. So even last hour, after we practiced a bunch, walking around, I saw a few people writing like a 52.3. But remember, that number would be too big. Okay? So um, those are my rules. That's, that's my framework for scientific notation. All right, so in example one, I'm going to take these numbers and write them in scientific notation. But before we do that, I want you to tell me, what do you notice about the top two numbers versus the bottom two numbers? One of them. One, don't, don't raise your hand. Nick? One, one million seven hundred, one hundred, one million seven hundred three dollars is bigger. No, 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 just the top two compared to the bottom okay, two. Okay, 173 is in front and 32 is in back. No. All right, Micah? Uh, the top two are larger. Numbers. Yes, the top two are really, really big. The bottom two are really, really small. Do you think that that's going to impact your exponent? That might be what you meant, but that's not what you said. Okay. All right. So do you see that? Okay. So what we need to do is we need to now pull out a decimal value that would be in that range, greater than 1 and less than 10. Okay. So what do you think on the 173 million? Could I make it? 17.3, would that be in the range? 1.73. Okay, so if I make it 1.73, that's greater than 1 and less than 10. All right, so I'm going to let you in on a hint. When it's the positive, when it's the really, really big numbers, it will always occur right after that first digit, okay, the decimal, the new decimal. So if I have 1.73, I need to now multiply that by a power of 10. I need to figure out what my exponent needs to be. All right, so here's a common mistake. Oh, I have six zeros, so it's to the sixth power. That's not what I do. That's not how many place values my decimal moved. Now, last year you learned that egg carton, egg crate uh, rule. You can do that. If you want to do these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, if you want to count them that way, you absolutely can. If you want to count, okay, that's six, seven, eight, you could do that as well. Okay, as long as you can recognize you're moving eight decimal places to get to your new number. 1.73 times 10 to the eighth. Go ahead and try the next one, 25 billion. Okay, so 2.5, does everybody agree that's in the range? Okay, so 2.5, now I have to figure out times 10 to the what power? Now, is it 9 because there's 9 zeros? No, but I do see that there's 9 zeros, so that would be 9 place values plus 1 more, which would be 10, 10 to the 10th power. Okay, so now Josh got it. Anybody else get that? 2.5 times 10 to the 10th. Okay, all right, very good. So now I go down to the bottom numbers. I still need to follow the number from left to right until I get to a place that gives me the proper range of values, greater than 1 and less than 10. So I can't move it after the 2 because that would be 32. 
I can't move it before the 3 because that would be 0.32 and it's too small. So obviously, where is it going to go? You can answer it. Between the 3 and the 2. Okay, so 3.2. Times 10 because remember, each place value is, is a power of 10. That's why 10 is our base. But now I'm going the other way. Notice this is a very small number. So what has to be in my exponent? Negative. The negative. Okay? Now I count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative sixth power. You could also count I have five zeros plus one more, so that would be negative 6. Okay? Either way would be fine. 3.2 times 10 to the negative 6. All right, I want you to try the last one, okay? Go ahead and try the last one. I'm going to walk around real quick. So, again, from left to right, I go to my first number that's not zero, which is going to be my five. Now, typically when zeros come after a five, I don't have to write them, right? 5.00, that wouldn't be necessary. Unless there would be a number at the end. I can't just drop off the seven because if I do that, then the number is different. And I'm not trying to change the value of this number. I need to keep it intact. So that's why it has to be 5.007. Now again, if that 7 had been a 0, I don't need them. 5.007 times 10 to the negative, now I count, 1, 2, 3, 4, to the negative 4th power. Okay? All right, questions? Okay, let's go the other way now. Let's do standard form. So a standard form, one of the biggest mistakes we see is we see the exponent and they say, okay, that means I need to add five zeros. The exponent doesn't tell you how many zeros. It tells you how many place values, all right? So when it's positive, look here. I have positive exponents over here and I have negative exponents over here. What do you think is going to be the difference? Uh, they're going to be smaller. Okay, so with a negative exponent, that means I need to make these numbers smaller. So that means I would move my decimal to the left to make my numbers smaller. Now with the positive exponents, that means I need to make my numbers bigger. So which way would my decimal move? To the right. Okay, you see how that works? So depending on which way I move it, look here, look up here on the screen. Does everybody agree a positive exponent means I need to move my decimal to the right? Does everybody agree? By how many places? How many places do I move my decimal on this one? I move it five. The exponent told me it needs to expand by five decimal places. All right? So what I'm going to do, because I know my decimal is moving to the right, is I'm going to see are there any decimal places already there? Are they? There are already two decimal places that would count as one, two, right? So how many more zeros would I need? Three more zeros to get to five. So the five doesn't tell me five zeros. It tells me how many decimal places. So I go three, two, two, and then three more zeros. Does everybody understand what I did there? No decimals. No commas until the end. Now that I know I have all my digits, I'm going to go from right to left and put in my commas. And yes, I will take off points on your quiz and your test if you don't have commas in your answer. Commas separate every third place value. So this is 322,000. Okay. I want you to try the next one down. 4 times 10 to the 6th power. Okay, figure out how many zeros you're going to need to add into that number. Go back and put in your commas. I have a question. Do we see any decimal? Okay, first of all, which way are we moving our decimal point? Right or left? Right. To the right, okay, because we need to make it bigger. All right, so wait a second. I don't see a decimal place, so where is it? Right after the four. It's right after the 4. I know that 4 is a whole number. It might be helpful to you to put that in there just so you can visually see it. So do I have any decimal places that I can count? Is there anything there? No, there's not. Which means how many zeros would I need to add to my number? Six. I need to add 6. So it's going to be 4 
and then six zeros, and then you go back from right to left and put in your commas. You see, because if you go left or right, you might say 400 and a comma, and then you run out of zeros. So that you have to go from right to left. Did y'all get 4 million? Did you guys get 4 million? Okay, do you see why we had to add six zeros on that one? Okay, so usually the exponent does not mean it's that many zeros, but it was in this case because I did not have any existing decimal uh, places in the number. All right, so now let's talk about the negative numbers. All right, so as you can assume, and we've already talked about this, if it's a negative exponent, which way does the decimal need to move? To the left. Okay, so if it's moving to the left, does the 0.9 count for anything as far as how many place? No, it doesn't. Okay, so I need to move to the left how many place values? Three. So does everybody agree there's already one in the number? Okay, so how many more zeros do I need in front of the seven? Two more zeros. So 0 0.0079, all right? Now remember, the original decimal place was here between the 7 and the 9. So I went 1, 2, 3 to the left, which was the, uh, what I was supposed to do. Okay, does everybody see how I got to my answer? Y'all see how I got to my answer? Okay. Yes, in front of it. It's a good place uh, holder. I won't take off if you don't have this zero in front of the decimal, but it is supposed to be a placeholder. Okay, so now here's the question. We know if it's a negative exponent, the zeros will go in front of the number, right? They'll go in front of the eight because I need to move my decimal to the left. The question is, how many zeros go in front of the eight? Don't say it out loud. Write it on your paper. Okay, so try to write this next number in standard form. Okay, so which way am I moving my decimal? I know I keep asking the same questions. The to the left, okay? So let me ask you this. Do these three decimal values count towards my six places? No, they don't, okay? So a lot of times we'll see that mistake. We'll say, oh, but I had three decimal places, so I thought I only needed three more zeros. But no, because the decimal's moving left, you only had one place value in the original number. So how many more zeros did you need? Five more zeros in front. One, two, three, four, five. And then the whole number. Eight, three, three, four. You gotta have the whole number because we're not changing the value of the number, we're just writing it in standard form a section like this on your homework tonight where it says what is the most appropriate unit to use okay and we're going to talk a little bit about conversion we're not going to get too too deep into conversion in this chapter but there is a little bit there okay so um go ahead and just write just uh match them up draw your lines and match them up just take a minute i'm i'm pretty sure you could probably figure out most if not all of them so what did you match with foot? High of an adult. High of an adult. Very good. Okay. What did you match with liter? Soft drink. Soft drink. Two liters. Okay. What about milliliter? Mosquito blood. Mosquito. All right. Remember that one. Uh, what about inches? Length of an infant. Yeah. Infant. Was that the one you were iffy on? Yeah. Yeah. No, I was going to put a foot. Yeah, because I was going to put a foot, but then I said, yeah. I didn't put a ball. For so, a yeah, when babies are born, they're like 21, 22 See, inches. Yeah, like, like 64 yeah. inches and stuff. Yeah, exactly. All right, and then mile is Jacksonville, Orlando. Okay, so we have an idea of what's an appropriate unit to use. Okay, so when we look at this example, it says a female flea. All right, has your dog ever had like fleas or cats? No, no. All right, it's, it can get a little out of control if you don't do the treatments. So one female flea consumes about 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth shh, hush, liters of blood. Look up here. I'm talking to you. Look up here. Liters of blood per day. A dog has 100 female fleas. That's a lot. 
What is the total amount of blood consumed by the fleas each day? Express your answer using more appropriate units. So we'll get to that last part in a minute. The first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how much blood this is. How much blood this is. So do you think scientific notation or do you think I would need standard form? Standard. I need standard form. I got to see this whole number expanded. So the first thing I need you to do is write 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth in standard form. Okay, go ahead and do that. Zeros, Josh, how many zeros did you add in front of the one? Uh, I added three. Yes, so three more zeros because the one's already there and count. So one, two, three, and then a one and a four. Okay, so did y'all get this for standard form? Yes. So this is how many liters of blood one female flea would consume in a day. By how many fleas does this dog have? A hundred. So how do you think you could figure out how much blood? A hundred. I know, all this blood talk is making it queasy. Multi yes. When I multiply a number by 100, what's, yes, what's happening to my decimal? It moves to the right two places. If I multiply by 1,000, it would move to the right three places. Okay, so this number is 0 0.014 liters remember that's the label that I'm working with is liters but now we need to explore this whole use more appropriate units what does that mean okay 14 thousandths of a liter that doesn't really make a whole lot of yeah, sense as far as right okay so we just chose appropriate units right so we wouldn't describe a mosquito bite in liters we would describe it in smaller, like a milla. Okay, so, <clears throat> so we have, all right, 0 0.014, all right, liters. Okay, so we're just going to put this over one. I'm going to erase my label for now. But we know that that's liters. I can convert this. What did you say we should convert it to? Milliliters. milliliters. Does everybody agree that there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. Yes. Okay. So because 0.014 was in liters, when I multiply it by its conversion, I can actually cross cancel these units. Okay. So now what's happening is I can multiply. Yep. I'm doing it right. Okay. I can multiply 0.014 now times 1,000 to convert it to milliliters. So if I'm multiplying 0.014 times 1,000, how many decimal places am I moving? Three. 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 So now it's going to become 14 Positive. Yes, milliliters. All right. So more appropriate units for a flea bite would be milliliters, which is why I converted it. Okay, so if I knew that it was in liters, do you necessarily need this fraction here? No, but you need to know what I did. If there's a number in liters, if I want to convert it bigger to smaller, I can multiply it by its conversion rate, which in this case was 1,000 because there's 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Okay, so I got 14 milliliters. All right, and if you understand that, that's everything you need to know for 8.6.